guys and gals. Anybody that wants to see what's left of the boat ramp on Mud Island, that is it. That's all that's left in the water. You can't launch right there, you're gonna lose your trailer. I launched right there and was okay. That right there is very sketch. I wouldn't go there either. I was able to get my boat in, but a big boat's not gonna make it. guys good morning i am straight across from the city of memphis on the mississippi river with it being at record low depths you can see the dikes are all the way out of the water i'm going to show you a little trick hopefully to finding white bass or any other fish that'll bite but mainly white bass and they usually tend to stick to the very tip end of these dikes where the water's coming around and they ambush the prey that gets washed over the rocks at the end. But for now, I'm gonna fish this sandbar and then fish up the edge of the rocks just so I don't miss anything because you never know where they're gonna be. But I'm gonna bounce around to a few different dikes because they're, not every one of the dikes will have fish on it, but you'll find a dike that'll have two or three on it or you might find one that's got 20 or 30. It's very hit and miss because there's so many dikes down the river if you take a mile stretch down the river, there's probably 20 of these dikes, depending on which stretch of the river you're on. So obviously not all of them are gonna have fish, but most of them will have one or two right out there at the end, or a lot of them will. I don't wanna say most, but in the summer they do. I'm not usually fishing the river in November, but it's supposed to be almost 80 degrees later today it's not right now it's kind of cool this morning it was around 60 when i got here and it's warming up fast now that that sun's out so we'll see how it goes oop got him right on the tip just like i said this feels like a white bass too oh yeah good white bass too let me net this guy. All right, guys, see? The tip end of the dike's got the white bass. That's a pretty big dude. That's a nice guy. Look, I'm straight across the river from Memphis. You can see Memphis right there. Let's see if I can block the sun for you. But that's a nice white bass right on the tip end of the dike, right where they're supposed to be. So what I'm gonna do today is bounce around to a few different dikes and see if I can't find some of these guys. That's a good white bass. Okay guys, I've made it to dike number two. This is technically number three, but there was a boat sitting on the second one. So this is the second one I'll be hitting. Got him. Oh man, it's a big gar. Okay, this is dike number three that I'm stopping at. The second one didn't have anything but gar on it. Okay guys, I just pulled up on dike number four and there were bait fish getting run up against the bank right there. And I don't know if it was because of my boat or if there was fish chasing them. It looked to me like there could have been fish chasing them. Like my boat probably scared them too. But the fact that there's bait fish in here tells me what it is that I need to know. Because not all these dikes have bait fish on them. But this one had them. I watched them jump out right there. And typically, that tells you that there's, there's going to be bass of some sort or predatory fish in here of some sort. Whether it's gar, grinnel, drum, something's usually in here. There he was right there. Right on the tip, right where he was supposed to be. Got him. <laughs> the 
helping me get the boat off of these rocks before they hit. That's not that's not a giant white bass, but that's a standard white bass. And he was right here on the tip of this dike. There's not much of the rocks that are in the water, as you can see. And he was right here on the tip, right where they're supposed to be, where that current's kind of coming around. They sit right here in this slack water. You can kind of see the difference in the current. They're gonna be right here. You could throw your bait over there and run it right around that tip. And usually when it gets right past the rocks, that's when they're gonna hit it. It's a good fish. All right, guys, I've caught two fish and this is dike number five. So I've only found two dikes with a single fish on it. This one's got a lot more rocks in the water. This one looks promising, but so have a couple of the other ones. So I don't think there's any rhyme or reason. It's just whether or not there's a fish on them or not. You just kind of got to cross your fingers and hope. This current's just doing what it wants with the boat. Look, there he was right there on the bank. Dang. Dang, he's barely hooked too. Got him. All right, guys, I had to get off of that. The water was sucking me. The current was sucking me right into the dike. So that's white bass number three. You can see downtown in the pyramid still right over there. So finally caught white bass number three. And I think that was a white bass that I lost a while ago. So there was at least two on this dike. All right, guys, I've about lost count, but I think this is dike number six. So six dikes, three fish, one fish for every other dike. So not a completely horrible ratio, especially not for November. But now this one had a blue herring. When I pulled up, it had a blue herring sitting right on it. So if I had to venture a guess, this one's got bait fish on it as well. That heron wouldn't have been there for no reason. And it was sitting right out here. So I'm gonna assume there's a lot of bait fish out here. What I may do is pull the boat up on the bank right here on this one, just because it's too convenient. And the current's going this way. So I'm gonna come over here, if I can keep from falling in the water. Woo, all these rocks are about to go. And I'm gonna bring my bait into the current because I can go slower. See, there they were. I ran the bait fish out. There he was right there, look at that. He was right on that big rock. Dang, that's a nice white bass. He's right in the current. Woo wee. All right, that's white bass number four. It's a nice fish. Got something. What have I got? That's a, oh man, I don't know what I had. Wow, that was a nice fish, whatever he was. I thought it was a gar at first, but then he ran like a white bass. It's in the same spot, I think it was a white bass. They're sitting right on the other side of this rock. 
that's right where the main current's going around see that would normally be the point but because this rocks out here this rock is the point and so I can almost pinpoint right where the fish are going to be sitting which is right there and you think I'm a little close but on the river guys it really doesn't make a difference not like you you would think like in a pond or a lake where you could spook the fish it's really hard to spook these fish I think they're coming up using this rock to ambush but they're not hanging out they're probably hanging out back there and they're coming up here when they're getting ready to feed That's the reason why it's so sporadic I think I need a brighter color and I could probably get more bites you may have to go back and look for a different color All right, I think this is dike number seven, but I could be mistaken. Apparently there's one to two white bass on every single one of these dikes. I've hung a fish on every dike. They weren't all white bass, but there was a couple of dikes back there. I think I was only hanging gar, but I've gotten a bite on every single one right at the tip. So with any luck, this one's got a couple on it too. And a matter of fact, that last one worked so good by parking the boat. Just, I will say this, guys. If you want to fish the dikes, this is the Arkansas side. I'm pretty sure this, I know this is the Arkansas side, but there's some of these parts that are actually still Tennessee. If you get out on the bank and you're on this side, make sure you have Arkansas license. I've got both, so I don't really have to worry about it. But if a game warden were to see you and want to come out here and you're standing on the bank, you got to have an Arkansas license. All right, this is dike number eight. This one's like dike number six. It's got a great big rock right on the end of it. I'm gonna strategically target that rock since the, the last one had a couple of fish sitting on it. This is probably the last dike I'm gonna hit going upstream just because it's miles around to the next one. You can see how shallow the river gets. The channel runs way around. To get to the next dike is probably at least another mile and a half. So this is the last dike I'm going to hit and I'm going to go backwards. I might hit a couple of the dikes that I already hit again on the way out. But this is probably going to wrap it up. So I'm hoping that I get something on this. All right, guys, this is the dike that I skipped because there was a boat sitting on it. So I'm coming from upstream. I'm going to get through the current and get around back there and then I'm going to fish it from the other side. Let's see if we can't catch another one right here. I'm gonna stay way back first. There he is, got him. <laughs> Little guy. It had a white bass on it, but he wasn't very big. You can see I'm straight across, I'm right under the bridge on this one. That's a little bitty guy. Let's throw him back over there. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today. Catching white bass out here on the Mississippi River that's all dried up right in downtown Memphis. You guys have a good one.